GCSEs are, oh, they're so hard. Oh, I biology, oh, oh, what do I write on this six mark question? I, I, oh, I've got man, no idea I, how I to do this. I need uh, a nine or a, a 10,000 on, on all my subjects. But how do you oh, revise? So how hard. do you revise? Oh, all oh these GCSEs subjects. are so got, stressful. I've got oh, 10, no. 11 oh, subjects to revise. Oh, more it's, stressful it's than it's getting to my head. I'm, I'm really getting overwhelmed. Oh, it's so hard to balance revising GCSEs and, and spending time with my Minecraft girlfriend. Oh, man. Oh, hey, does that sound familiar? Are you struggling with your GCSEs? Well, you clicked on the right video because in this video, I'll be teaching you guys my biggest tips on how to smash your GCSEs. Yo, what is up guys? My name is Taha Bert. I'm a third year medical student studying at Newcastle University. And today's video, uh, it was Fatma Hussein who said, who asked the question on my channel, could you do a video on how you revise for biology and chemistry if possible? So yeah, in this video, I'll be giving my biggest tips for GCSEs and how to smash them. Make sure if you find the video useful, drop a like and also hit subscribe button. We hit 400 subscribers and, and I'll do a 400 subscriber special soon, don't worry. But I just want to quickly say thank you guys so much. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. The growth we've seen is, is phenomenal. Please keep on sharing my videos and inshallah, we're aiming for 1K by the end of 2020. 2021? Damn! Oh my gosh! It's 2021, man. Also, make sure to check out my other video on GCSE and A-level requirements. If you want to know like what GCSE grades you would need to study medicine, to apply for medicine at universities, then please check out that video. The difficulty with GCSEs is not so much the depth of knowledge, it's more the breadth. A lot of you are probably studying nine to 11 subjects, you know, and you're, you're trying to aim to smash all of them. I can honestly say, yeah, in hindsight, GCSEs was probably the most focused and the most disciplined I've ever been. Like e even now, like I'm in medical school, I don't think I've worked as hard as I did, you know, at my GCSEs. Stop the cap. <laughs> Bro, I was like the avatar man. I was I was bending 11 different elements. I was, oh my gosh. I still remember my GCSE timetable for the summer period. I had like 26 different exams and they weren't like spaced out. They were all within like a month, I think, or a few weeks and you know, just exam after exam. One day I had three exams, three different exams. I've never reached that avatar state since then. I've just been exhausted. And I'm scarred, frankly, from that experience. Alhamdulillah, it gets uh, easy after GCSEs, so... <laughs> so, I do understand how tough it can be, so I'm here to give my biggest tips. Number one, revise smartly, okay? So do your past papers, watch relevant YouTube videos, buy the CGP revision guides for, for the subjects, okay? Work through flashcards, whether it's on paper, or Quizlet for subjects like, you know, history and languages where it's just remembering facts. Make the most of your time. Don't spend a long time working through a resource that's not gonna benefit you. For example, homework. Now, d do your homework, okay, please, and do it to the best you can, yeah, to impress your teacher and all that. Don't use this video or me as an excuse to, to why you didn't complete your homework. I'm not saying that. But if your homework is crap, if it's not gonna benefit you, okay, for your exams, then just try to just do it well, yeah, but try to spend less time on that and more on stuff that's gonna actually benefit you for your exams. So if we focus more on like GCSE, maths, biology revision, one of the, probably the biggest help for me and the best way to revise these are past paper questions. Once you learn to topic, so for example, photosynthesis and biology, you know, I used to Google questions by topic for my exam board for that subject, you know, so for example, OCR biology GCSE questions by topic. Basically what these websites did, they were really, really useful. They would collate questions by topic for that subject. So you would have a link to all the photosynthesis questions, past paper questions of for biology OCR, whatever example you're doing, you know, for the past 10 years. And you could work through that. 50% of exams, yeah, is about knowing the content, about actually having that knowledge. The other 50% is, knowing what to actually write down for your answer. So after doing loads of past papers and checking through the answers yourself and checking through the mark scheme, you'll basically learn what the mark scheme for your exam board wants you to write down because the questions, they don't really differ too much from year to year. You're always gonna get really similar six mark questions on, on photosynthesis or, or, or whatever sort of topic within that subject. You need to learn the keywords that they use in the mark scheme. 
So when the examiner comes to mark your answer paper, you want them just to see the keywords that you've written down and then for them to just give you the marks, like tick, 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 six out of six, that's what you want. And you learn what keywords to use by doing loads of questions and loads of past papers and going through the mark scheme yourself. These questions by topic websites are really good because it means that you know, you don't have to have covered the whole of the syllabus, the whole of GCSE biology to start doing past paper questions. As long as you covered sort of one topic, you know, respiration or, or whatever, then you can just go on to, you know, straight away do questions. So yeah, past papers, past papers, past papers. You need to make sure, before you even sit that exam yet, you need to make sure that you've done every past paper there is, like for that exam board. And even, for example, maths, I remember doing a lot of the past papers like twice or a few times to really get it in my head. And when it comes to that period when you're coming close to your exam and you've covered the whole of the syllabus, make sure you do full past papers in timed conditions. So what I'm talking about is exam technique. You need to be able to, to complete these past papers in timed conditions and under time pressure and also know what keywords or know how to actually answer these questions. Also after completing these past papers, you can actually search for the grade boundaries for that year, for that exam board and find out like what sort of stage you're at or how much progress you've made. That's how I'd revise subjects like biology, chemistry and maths, those sort of subjects. Do past papers, past papers, past papers. And in terms of actually learning the knowledge and understanding the concepts, GCSEs are sort of more about memorizing facts rather than understanding concepts because as I said before, the difficulty is not the subjects being in depth, it's more of the, the breadth of different subjects you have to revise for. So stuff like the CGP revision guides, I remember being really, really useful for just remembering facts and memorizing them. And then the other 50%, as I said, is just doing past papers, knowing what to write down, knowing what the examiner wants to see and knowing what keywords there are in the mark scheme. The keywords are gonna get you those marks. Also, talking about exam period, when it comes close to exam period, you need to balance out and prioritize time. If you struggle in a subject much more than in others, so if you're really good at maths, but not so good at English, you need to spend more time revising and working on your English skills than maths. For example, if you have a maths and English exam, so two exams on Tuesday, and you struggle more in English than maths, then on the Monday, the, the night or day before, I'd probably just do like one maths pass paper and like work through it and just mark it myself, but then focus the rest of the day and the rest of the night on English, like really just sort of focus on that. And it's a hard thing to do because everyone likes working through and go doing past paper questions on the topics they like and that they're good at. No one likes to do past papers or work on a subject that they're not good at because you're gonna see yourself getting bad grades and it's just difficult. But I promise you, the more you work on it, the less difficult that subject will become and the more better grades you will get. Linking in with organizing your time, when you get your list of GCSE exams, you know, your 20 exams you're gonna have to sit in the space of like four weeks or whatever, you must, you have to, okay, make a revision timetable, an exam timetable for yourself, for GCSEs. This is gonna help you to organize your time on, on what you're gonna revise on what day, and it's gonna save so much stress. So instead of you know stressing on which subject and which exam should I revise for on what day, you should have already completed that, all of that work and have organized it for yourself in advance to give you time to just focus on revision in that exam period. So yeah, that's revising smartly. Make the most of your time, work through the resources that are gonna benefit you the most. Pass papers, pass papers, pass papers to work on your exam technique. And lastly, make your revision or exam timetable so that you can organize your time really well during your exam period so you can focus more of your time on actually doing work during that period. Tip number two, be ahead of the game. Now, this is one of the best things you can do. If you pre-read or learn the topic before it's taught in school, that's gonna really help reinforce your knowledge because you're covering that topic again. Not only that, but you you look like a friggin' genius, all right? Because you're, you're the only one who can answer all the, all the teacher's questions. I remember like it was maths or like biology and the teacher would ask questions on that topic and I would just be firing my hand up because I, I went through the topic already. And I know what a lot of you are thinking right now, what a loser, oh, this, this, this guy, I must have not had any time to have fun at GCSEs or, you know, I must have just spent all my time pre-reading and getting ahead of the game. I can tell you right now, it's literally not hard. Like if you, if you just, especially for me, I had the help of personal tutors, it made it so easy just to be ahead of the game and it made life so much more easier because some of the complex or what I thought at the time were complex, 
ideas and concepts and GCSE subjects, I got through it much quicker than most of the other students because I had covered it multiple times. And yeah, I don't think I did it for every single subject, like stuff like history, I don't think I pre-read, but stuff like chemistry, biology, maths, um, even languages as well. If you just do a bit of pre-reading, if you just get ahead, at least for science, I, I know this for a fact, that the teachers just follow the curriculum, like in order to teach. And I actually remember sort of knowing my teacher's lesson plan. And the teacher's aim is just to make sure that they've covered and taught the specific learning outcomes for that subject. So you can cover the outcomes on the curriculum before your teacher does. So yeah, getting ahead of the game, if you revise the topic before your teacher teaches it, then when you get taught it, you're just further reinforcing and getting that information stuck in your head, which is gonna make it easier when it comes to exams. So you're gonna smash the exams. Tip number three, make the most of your teachers and ask for help. I can say this now, yeah, in hindsight, but your teachers, the, the clever students in your class, the head of years, these are the best resources you can use towards your learning. Bro, uh, you know at university, yeah, uh, this is what I find when you grow up, you get less and less help, less people help you, you're just, you're just all by yourself, that's how I feel. I mean, I, I've got my friends, yeah, okay, and they help me out a lot, but this is the thing, we all don't know what we're doing, all right? We need help. <laughs> we all need help. We stay afloat if we all help together, yeah? But I don't know what I would do if I was all by myself. And even at university, you don't really get a teacher. You get a tutor, but it's definitely not the same. It's not someone you see every day and you have, you can build like that relationship with them and they can help you with whatever problem you have in that subject. So make the most of your teachers. So I remember I used to study RE for GCSEs and I would do like a 14 mark past paper question at home. I'd write up my 14 mark answer and bring it in for the teacher to mark. That wasn't homework. That was me just doing that in my own time and giving it to my teacher to mark, which she was so happy about because it showed that I was enthusiastic. So then she was willing to help me more in the future because she actually thought, oh yeah, this kid actually wants to do well in the subject and they might want to do it in A-levels. I didn't study RE at A-levels. Sorry, Miss Whiting, I kind of kind of finessed you, I can't lie. What the f***, fam? Have you stunt? But it was so helpful because very often your teacher has also worked as an examiner. So it's people like them who are going to be marking your answer paper. So if you're studying a subject that requires essay like writing or answers, write up those essays at home and give it to them to mark and to give you feedback. I learned so much from doing that. And I did that multiple times because you know, the feedback that I got, uh, she, you know, she taught me how to improve on my 14 mark answers and my 10 mark answers. And sometimes I did really bad. I would get really low marks, okay? But it's all about learning. Don't let it get to you. It's all about getting better and you want to do bad and you want to fail in the sort of practice tests. Okay, so that you can do absolutely amazing in the real test. Something that really enhanced my learning experience throughout the whole of school is this one quote, okay? And it is, a person who asks is a fool for five minutes. A person who never asks is a fool forever. I was the person, yeah? I don't care how stupid the question was, all right? If, if I didn't get something, I would make sure I'd ask that teacher because I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the perfect environment. I'm in that, I've got the perfect opportunity to make the most of this teacher. This teacher knows the answers to the questions that I wanna ask. Why would I not ask the question, man? I don't care about looking stupid to my friends, yeah? At the end of the day, who, who, who's got the A star, yeah? Who's got the A in that subject? Me, why? Because I got those Ds, I got those Es, and I asked the questions. I wasn't afraid to ask the questions in class. So ask the questions, yeah? And don't be afraid to fail. As long as you learn from your mistakes, and as long as you don't make those mistakes again, okay? Don't make those mistakes again and learn from them, okay? And keep on getting better and better. That's how, that's how you get better. Ask questions, make mistakes, get better, work hard. That's what you should do. So yeah, you guys can do it. Just work hard. Remember those three tips, okay? Revise smartly. Uh, what was the second one? Be ahead of the game and make the most of your teachers and do not be afraid to ask for help. You need that, I can't stress that enough. In all of life, if, if you don't understand something and you're, you're getting instructed to do something or you have a task to carry out and you don't know what you're doing, just ask for help. Who, who cares if you look like an idiot? You know, you're gonna look like an idiot for five minutes, but if you don't ask, you're gonna look like an idiot for the rest of your life.
you'll be an idiot. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please, if you have any video suggestions or anything you want to see like Fatima did, please drop them down below in the comments. Remember to subscribe, hit like on my video if you found it useful. Visit my Instagram as well, give it a follow. And again, thank you guys so much for 400 subscribers. Inshallah, we're gonna hit 1K by the end of 2021. Cool, I'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye.